All right. So before we begin with the first question itself, I'll give you all a very important tip when it comes to mechanics. So make sure that whenever you are starting your questions, you are if the length of the text that is given to you for the question is pretty much long, try to understand it by sentence by sentence. And if possible, try to also make a diagram out of it. And trust me, it will automatically make all the things simplified. And if you're having a diagram in front of you, and if it's a label diagram, you don't really need to reread the question again and again. Right? The diagram itself is going to help you to solve all the kind of questions, not just first part, not the second part. That's if there are five parts, that diagram. And if you keep on adding the diagrams from the subsequent parts of the question, that diagram is itself enough to solve any kind of given question in mechanics. Right? So with that being said, let's start with the first question of this paper. And we are having a crate of mass 200 kg. It's being pulled. I'll also just highlight all of these things. So there is a crate of 200 kgs. It's being pulled at a constant speed. Now this constant speed is also important. I'll tell you uh, in a moment why. Uh, it's being pulled along horizontal ground by a horizontal rope attached to a winch. Now this winch is working at a constant rate of 4.5 kilovolts, And there is a constant resistance also that is uh, present to the motion of the crate of this much amount of magnitude, right? So that's the amount of resistance. So now all the things that I've underlined are important things for me to go ahead and just reread this whole question once again, line by line and create a diagram out of it. Okay. So even without reading the first part, I can create the diagram on the basis of only this much amount of paragraph that we are having. So let's go ahead and do it. So the first line, the first line says that a crate is having this much amount of mass. So I'll draw a crate. That's a, this is a crate with 200 kgs mass. Okay. It's being pulled at a constant speed along a horizontal ground. So now constant speed basically means what? It basically says that the value of A is equal to zero because constant speed basically refers to there is no change in speed, right? And what's the meaning of acceleration? In a given time frame, how much amount of velocity has been changed, right? So if the speed is constant, the velocity is constant. So if velocity is not changing, there is no acceleration, right? Now, based on this acceleration equal to zero that is acting on the body, we can also comment on one more thing. What is the net force acting on this particular body? So if I talk about the net force on the left side over here, we know that F net equals to the mass of the body times the net acceleration acting on the body. So if acceleration acting on the body is zero, automatically the force is also zero. So now we can also comment over here that if A is equal to zero, we can also get this idea that the net force acting on this body is equal to zero. So this is the kind of idea that we got by reading only the first few words of the first sentence, right? Then there's also a horizontal ground. So let me draw a horizontal ground over here, right? So that's your horizontal ground. And, uh, it's been pulled uh, by a rope that is uh, attached to a winch, right? So even if you don't know what's a winch, it's completely fine. We know that there is something, there is some kind of rope which is pulling this particular crate. So let's say that that crate is acting, uh, like that crate is being pulled to the right with some kind of a force F. All right, so that's something that we have created from the first line. Now from the second line, we are uh, say that the winch is working at a constant rate of this much amount. And there is a constant resistance to the motion uh, of the crate of 600 newtons. So because of the air resistance or maybe the friction because of the ground, we are getting a total resistance of 600 newtons, which is constant, right? Now there's also a force which is uh, applied because of the uh, winch, which is producing a power of this much amount of units. So I cannot really uh, mention the power in my force body diagram. But however, I can just mention that detail over here. That A is equal to zero, right? We also have F net equal to zero. And we are having the value of the power equals to 4,500 volts, right? 
4.5 kilovolts is same as writing 4500 or 4500 watts right so that's the power right now let's read the first part all the kind of diagram that we had to draw from this paragraph all the kind of information that we could not really show on this diagram uh, these are basically called force body diagrams uh, in which we are basically trying to show what kind of forces are acting on a particular body uh, of some kind of mass. Okay, So that's the only thing that we are showing. Uh, all the other things obviously you can write uh, over here on the top as I have written over here. But just to document all the things in a proper way, I'm just writing it over here. You could have also written like, you know, the value of P over here is uh, 4, 5, double, 0, what? You don't even need to write it over here. Okay, It's not compulsory to do that. It's just for you, a better documentation. But anyway, and let's say I am writing this paper in my examination. So that's something that I would have done, right? I would draw my force body diagram over here. I would write all the kind of other information so that I don't have to read the question again and again. All right? So yeah, that's it from the first uh, particular paragraph. Now comes the first part of this question. It states that the find the time it takes for crate to move a distance of 15 meters. So let's say that this rate is doing a 15 meters distance. So now what will be the amount of time that would have spent in order to do this? So now for that, what I'll have to do is I'll first of all have to find out what is the value of this force F. Because once I know that what is my force, I can use the formula of power to find out the value of time. So let's understand how we can find the value of F. So what is the net force acting on this 200 kg's body? So I, can I say that F net over here? Let me choose a better color. Yeah. So let me say that F net over here is let's say F minus 600. Okay. And uh, we also know that F net equal to zero, right? Because of this. So we can say that zero is equals to F minus 600. And therefore, simply F is equal to 600 newtons. So now this, because this net force is equal to each other, that's why we were getting acceleration of zero, right? But still it's moving at a constant velocity, right? Don't forget that it's moving, right? And because it's moving with some constant velocity, it's still moving in the front direction. Uh, and after 50 meters, we have to find out uh, what's the time that has elapsed. So now we'll take the use of the formula of power. We know that power is nothing but force into velocity and velocity is the rate of change of displacement, which is F into what's the displacement that has been uh, traveled in a given point of time. So now we know the value of power, we know the value of force, we know the amount of distance that has traveled. The only thing that we don't know is this time. And that's what we'll be calculating. So therefore, 4500 is equals to 600 into 15 over T. So this implements that T is equal to, if you use your Kelsey to get the answer over here, you will get the answer as, um, let me check. Uh, the answer will come out to be, Two seconds. Okay. So two seconds will be the answer. Now for part B it's given that the rope breaks after the crate has moved for 15 meters. So after the crate moved for 15 meters, the rope is going to break. So therefore there is no force that is going to pull it forward, right? There is just because of inertia it will keep on moving ahead. So now find the time taken after the rope breaks for the crate to come to rest. So obviously, as I mentioned, as there is no forward force, it will come to rest automatically. There is no power or any kind of engine due to which it's going to move forward, right? So let's go ahead and try to see what kind of diagram do we get for this situation. So let's say this is the horizontal ground. This is the crate. And uh, now there is only one force acting on the backward side, that is 600 newtons. And don't forget that the weight is 200 kgs. And now, after this crate has moved for 15 meters, like it started from this particular point from part A, and it reached there after traveling for 15 meters. 
and now it's still going to move ahead it's still going to move ahead but now there is only one force and because it's not balanced by any kind of other force there will be some kind of value of acceleration or i should say deacceleration because it's slowing down right because there is no force which is pulling it ahead so automatically the speed is decreasing and therefore acceleration will be negative and therefore i should say there would be some kind of deacceleration so first of all let us find out what's the value of that deacceleration with the help of newton's law of motion we know that f net equals to m right f net equals to m a right so now we know that the value of f net is minus 600 and the value of mass is 200 and a stays as it is therefore the value of acceleration comes out to be 0 0 goes out minus 6 over 2 will be minus 3 meter per second square so i should represent my acceleration with double arrows like with double this and it says that acceleration is minus 3 meter per second square or in other words deacceleration is of 3 meter per second square all right now what we can do to find out the time we know that the final the final position of this particular crate would be when the velocity comes out to be zero so we are having the value of a we are having the value of v we are asked to find out what's the time but we don't know what is u because once we know what is the value of u we can simply go ahead and use the equation v is equals to u plus a d so how can we find out this u this u is the speed of this crate that we had seen in the first part that it was having a constant speed so what's that constant speed how can we find that so we know that we know that speed is a distance over time if there is no acceleration that this is the formula that we have for speed then the value of that speed would be equal to there was 15 meters that it had traveled in two seconds so that's the value of u basically that's the value of u 15 over 2. now we'll be substituting the values of v as 0 u as 15 over 2 a as minus 3 and find out the value of t therefore it will be 0 is equals to 15 over 2 minus 3d and now if you solve this uh, in kelsey you will get the value of time as let's see what we get it's coming out to be 2.5 seconds so t is equals to 2.5 seconds so yeah that's it that's the end of part b as well of question one